Hey guys and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the new Inner Circle Companions from the Dark Angels and I must say these are probably my favourite looking miniatures that have come out for the Dark Angels so far. So much so I'm going to grab another box of these and probably do like a diorama or a piece for like a golden demon entry which I know I'm not good enough for a golden demon but I can pretend to myself that I am. Also, in this video, we're going to be paying special attention to certain areas um, because there's quite a lot to paint on these miniatures, so I'm going to try and keep it as short and sweet as possible, give you alternative methods as always, and I'm also going to get into a few new techniques, especially like when it comes to power weapons and stuff that we've never gone over before. And I'm also going to be going over some paints that will keep it more in line with the grimdark aesthetic and uh, giving you hints, tips and techniques on how to achieve those looks. So first thing that we need to do is get these miniatures primed, which I have used Colour Forger's Matte Black. Now when it comes to actually painting, first thing I'm going to do is the Power Armor. And there's two ways that we can do this. You can either do it via Airbrush or you can actually do it um, via which method I probably suggest, which is like a dry brush method. Because these have got like the standard black armor with a hint of green, what we're going to do first of all is get Corvus Black. And, and I've just tested this one more like a test piece, this first piece through airbrush, um, which will give you a different look. Um, it looks quite nice because obviously I just wanted to highlight the black. However, you can dry brush this on as well, which we'll get into in just a second. Now, because these miniatures, well, these soldiers are actually chosen by the lion, um, we're going to edge highlight it and keep it more in with a the lion theme with Sons of Horus Green. Now, you can do this again if you want to take your time and really do it all neat, which is just with a standard brush and adding little scratches here and there will really set this miniature apart from the rest. Or another way, which is what you'll see in just a second, and it's really fast. I get these like flat brushes. Um, which are really, really good for like doing edge highlights and dry brushing. Now, if you've never got into dry brushing, you don't want that like chalky look, then I'd recommend, uh, I'll link it in the description below, the Artist Opus way of dry brushing. You can either do it with these flat brushes or as he teaches in that way, like the uh, fatter like makeup sponge brushes. But in end, I actually did go with the dry brush method as it, I liked the look it gave me, it gave like the armor a bit of pitting. And overall, I just liked the look and aesthetic of the armor. And if you want to push the light source on the armor a little step further, you can mix in a little bit of celestial gray with the Sons of Horus green and just catch like your top down edges or edges that would be naturally a little bit brighter uh, and it'll just make them stand out that little bit more. And that is the power armor done. Nice, quick and simple and easy. Now is also a good stage to add some decals or any little bits of like painted details on the like shoulder pauldrons and stuff before we move on to the robes. Now on his garments he's got like an undergarment and this is like a brownie colour and I got Steel Legion Drab and I mixed it 50-50 first of all with Rhinox Hide. Uh, that was like my base coat and that's going to be like my shadow areas and then what I did was work my way up to... Uh, Steel Legion Drab for the highlights and I'm just using again the methods that we've gone over previous videos like the tippy tappy scratchy method and then as one final additional tight highlights I just added a little bit of Karak Stone in there and that was the undergarments done. Now his robes which are going to be like a standout piece on this miniature this is where you want to really take your time and if you've not seen you know, like my videos on like this tippy tappy scratchy method and um, the colors are I've got Gal Vorbach Red and I've thinned it down a little bit just to make everything just go on like a little bit smoother. And you might have to do a couple of coats of this, but what's going to be nice is if you're building it up in a couple of coats, especially with this like tippy tappy scratchy method, it gives it a little bit of texture. So you're going to work your way around and build it up over a couple of layers and like your second layer and the layers that you go up, you want to be paying more attention to like your highlight areas and it's just going to keep those shadow areas a little bit more in the dark. Now to push that even further, once you've done uh, your couple of coats of the Galvorback Red, uh, you're going to get some Nun Oil, which is not like me to use these sort of inks, but get some Nun Oil, give everything an entire wash and coat over the top of it, and then we're going to get our Galvorback Red again and start to mix in a little bit of Jean Stealer Purple. And what that's going to do, it's just going to add is your highlight sections, just working your way around with the tippy-tappy scratchy method and 
or you can even again if you because there's a lot of dry brushing in this video if you want to use like your dry brushing method you're more than welcome to do that as well but in my eyes like taking your time on this and building it up is really going to lean more into like the scratchy textured effect now at this point because we've put null oil on and our decals are dry i gave the entire miniature a quick varnish of satin varnish and this just sealed everything it got rid of that awful shine that non oil tends to <laughs> put on your on your miniatures um, and that's our main sections done now there's going to be a little bit of a time jump here and literally all I've done at this point is base coated my metallics I'm going to quickly go over them now for you so we can move into our next stages. So all the like the golden bronzy trim that was base coated in pro acryl bronze even though it's a bronze it's a really nice base coat for like a, like a grim dark gold. All the metallic silver areas were painted in Vallejo gunmetal and obviously as you can see on the top like the one that's got like this big like banner slash relic thing um, that was again the the silver parts were base coated in the uh, Vallejo gunmetal and then I just dry brushed a little bit um, of uh, Vallejo silver over like the wing areas just to make them stand out now because I wanted the a bit of like verdigris in there for that bit I got a little bit of um, like a copper color and I just dry brushed that uh, over the top of the uh, pro acryl bronze so that later on when we weather it up um, it's just going to act as like a different color and look a bit more weathered also one of my favorite things to do for the wash stage uh, especially when it comes to metallics I, I pretty much do this all the time I get the contrast paint rattling grime and I give all the metallic areas a wash or like a, a coat of the rattling grime and it just really leans into like that grim dark aesthetic now with all my golds especially for the grim dark style I like to get Peridot alchemy and just dry brush this all over his uh, metallic areas on the trim and then all the silver metallic areas were just done with Vallejo silver and now we're ready to move on to our power swords. Now when it comes to power swords this is a method that I absolutely love and I think it gives you some really good and interesting results. Now you do need an airbrush for this however if you're going to be using brushes obviously you're going to have to go down to like a, a glazing um, so for non airbrush guys I do apologize um, for this but it gives this really nice non metallic metal look. And I've just got Tamiya flat white, XF flat white, going through my airbrush. And I'm just spraying it into certain areas, just building up that white, like missing little sections out so that it stays in shadow. And obviously to mask off, I've just literally pierced a bit of roll. And that'll make sure that we don't get any overspray areas. Also, uh, for one of them, if you're going to do like smoke, because um, I went for the non-smoke options, but I kept one of them in just to show you for this tutorial now is a good point as well to like a downwards like angle is to just fire this into the smoke areas or if you're a brush guy you can dry brush this on um, for his little like uh, lantern thing that he's carrying um, and then that'll move us on to our next stage for the power that for like the blue power glow we're going to get some uh, Croxy Gore scale which is another contrast paint or you can use pteridon turquoise they're very similar in tone and I'm just literally firing again that into certain areas on the like power sword. Uh, for the lantern, I got a little bit of the it is called Maga Maga. This is a tongue twister. Magadroth flame contrast paint. It's really strong, but again, I threw my airbrush for his lantern and I put that on there. Now, as one final little touch, which really finishes off the power swords, I went back to my Vallejo silver and I just dry brush because what it's going to do is just going to catch those like edges of the sword uh, and the little bit in the middle and it's just going to tie everything together and gives you like a really nice powered glow and it also gives it that like non-metallic metal look but because you've got metallic on top yeah it just you, you the results will speak for themselves it just looks really really nice and then for the lantern itself I know I've probably done this wrong because flames don't come out like this but I just dry brushed a little bit of yellow just to highlight some of that orange 
now I'm going to go over quickly some finishing touches that we can put onto this miniature because there's quite a lot of details that we need to go over. I don't want to keep you at ages going over all the details. So all the white areas like the um, like his chest plate and stuff, these were base coated. You can use any greys for this, so as long as you've got a dark, a medium, and then up to like a white, uh, you can literally do that. But if you want to know my the ones I used, I literally used AK smoke, uh, sorry, AK ash grey as a base coat. Then went up to neutral grey, pale grey, and then one final highlight of Vallejo white. But again, these greys and whites can be any colour, and I just dry brushed them on. For all the brown sections, like his pouches and stuff, if you want to go and check out a video of mine on like leather, you'll be able to see how you can apply that to this using like your Rhinox hide and Mornfang brown. And one little thing that I missed right at the beginning of his robes was like the little pattern and lines that go round on the bottom of his robe and around his hood. Now again, this is going to take a lot of time and it really comes down to brush control and the control that you have if you feel comfortable doing this. But I just literally got some pale grey um, from AK Interactive and because it's like an nice opaque paint, it sort of went on in one stroke. Again, don't worry too much if you don't get it perfect because the robe does move, but making sure that you're not, you know, trying to keep it parallel uh, around it. But you want to do this stage when you've done your robes. And then for the weathering of this miniature, because you didn't think we were going to get through it without a little bit of uh, oils and enamels, um, this stage is optional for like the verdigris. Obviously, I used uh, Dirty Down's verdigris effect with a little bit of nylock oxide from GW, or you can just go straight into your nylock oxide. And then I've just got some brown enamel, or you can use streak and grime at this point. Or if I, what I would really recommend is the new ones if you want to go and check out my video on the Goons Grime or the new Villainy Inks range. Again, this enamel stage is completely optional. It's entirely up to you if you want to make them look a bit more grimdark. If not, uh, I would recommend putting a little bit of like tattiness and dirt around the bottom of the robes, and you can easily do this by glazing some like browns or whatever color base that you want to go for for your scheme. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. So if you want to know what basing I use, this is by a company called Kraut Cover. These are a fantastic basing company. It's sort of a one dip does all thing. They've got a great range of products. And if you want to check out some of these products and get them here in the UK, then I've just recently become an affiliate member of Firestorm Games. So these is one of the UK companies that sell these products. And I'd highly recommend jumping over to them if you want to check out what Kraut Cover's got. And you can also pick up some of these inner circle companions at a great discounted rate so check out my affiliate link program below and and just um, do using that it just helps me out helps them out and overall I get a little bit of something in return and um, so until next time guys I'll catch you in my next video thank you for coming along please rate subscribe and all that sort of for jazzle that we do on uh, YouTube these days so thanks for watching guys and until next time I'll catch you in my next video